Yeah, I think uh, you have seen the assignment and uh, all those rates that you have to develop using that assignment. I think I told you last class also, last uh, minute when I was about to leave, I said that all those classes are called, I mean all those uh, reactions are called intrinsic rate of reaction. Okay? So, the meaning of intrinsic rate of reaction is no mass transfer coming, but in reality you will have definitely some mass transfer all the time. Okay? So, that is why now we will take the other two steps in the beginning that is mass transfer through the film and also diffusion through the pores and of course, same mass transfer steps even at the end also for the products. So, same analysis is also valid there. Why should we do this you know mass transfer steps? Mass transfer steps we have to do because if the mass transfer is rate controlling the entire surface area the way we imagined in uh, LHHW models may not be covered with the molecules because you do not have sufficient amount of reactant A or reactant B which is going through the surface I mean which is going through the pores and then just sitting on the surface. So, that is why all the surface area that is uh, there inside the catalyst particles might have not been used for reaction and that is really uh, very bad particularly when I have noble metals, noble metal catalysts. Noble metal catalysts are very, very costly, platinum is used for as a catalyst okay, in many reactions. So, if platinum surface only 10 percent covered or 50 percent covered, the remaining 50 percent of the platinum is waste. So, that is why it is always better to have an idea how how can we say that my catalyst is 100 percent effectiveness factor equal to 1 or 100 percent uh, it is useful or only 50 percent is useful or only 80 percent is useful. That is why we define a term called effectiveness factor. Okay. Effectiveness factor I think in your understanding can it be more than 1 or less than 1 or uh, just always 1 or uh, any, any what is your understanding till now? Always there is no other condition less than 1 under what conditions or uh, you say for anything is less than 1. Huh? Mass yeah, mass transfer only if mass transfer is not coming into picture then uh, you have intrinsic rate where the entire surface area is useful effectiveness factor equal to 1. Okay? But I am saying this 1 is it same uh, I mean uh, the definition wise is it valid for under any conditions or there are some uh, conditions where it is not valid. How do you define effectiveness factor? It is actual rate upon intrinsic rate. Yeah, excellent. Actual rate of reaction divided by intrinsic, intrinsic rate of reaction okay. or reaction evaluated at bulk conditions. That means, all the bulk gas whatever concentration you have in the bulk that is also there on the surface which means absolutely there is no mass transfer resistance. Otherwise, same concentration you will not have within the pores right. right? Okay, that is how. But these, it is restricted to a particular thing, or uh, generally we can define like that. In this definition, yeah. this intrinsic rate yeah. is uh, evaluated at what conditions? I think uh, single, taking into account only single particle catalyst. A single particle only, that, that's okay. But what other conditions? Because I told you also that the uh, denominator intrinsic rate is always evaluated at. Yeah only for isothermal case it is eta equal to 1 or eta equal to 1 if, the, if you do not have a mass transfer uh, coming into picture, but less than that if you have then you will have uh, eta less than 1, but if you have exothermic reaction for example, non isothermal okay, exothermic reaction, then the reaction is taking place on the surface. It might have not completely occupied by these molecules of uh, reactants the surface, but still it is an exothermic reaction and the, when the reaction is taking place even with 50 percent of area covered the temperature will increase and we know this temperature always has the effect of increasing the rate of reaction because of Arrhenius equation. So, under those conditions many times effectiveness factor can go to even 1000 times. Okay? That means, the rate of reaction inside the particle uh, you know when it is highly exothermic the temperature is so high the rate of reaction within the particle will be very, very high when compared to bulk rate. Right? So, bulk that means, when you are talking about non isothermal uh, effectiveness factor, we are talking about the actual rate of reaction divided by the rate evaluated at bulk temperature and bulk concentration. Okay? 
So, that is what you know next few classes will uh, focus on. How do you evaluate the effectiveness factor? So, that I will find out for my catalyst what is the effectiveness. Particularly all these catalysts are very, very costly. That is why we should have an idea how the catalyst is performing. Like same thing, you know people say that we are not even using our 1 percent of our brain. So, what will be effectiveness factor 0 0.1. Okay, most of the time that happens. Point one. Point one. Point zero. Ten percent is one percent. Ah, okay, one percent. Okay, point point not one. Yeah, point not one. Oh, ten percent is large. Yeah. Uh, ah, ten percent means all of you should have done PhDs and all that already. Yeah. So we are not doing that. Yeah. So point not one percent. Ah, point not one is the effectiveness factor. So like that, it is better to have some idea. About our catalyst. Other than that, the another advantage, you know, because many people do not know what is the use of effectiveness factor. We will simply derive the equations nicely. But where are you going to use? We don't know. That's why now I am trying to tell in the beginning itself what is the use of these effectiveness factors. One is to find out whether we have an, a very good catalyst or not. The other one is if someone has already given an intrinsic rate. That means there is no without any mass transfer controlling the rate and uh, entire surface area is used, but the catalyst manufacturer will say that you know depending on the pores, because he has to manufacture the catalyst. Normally, he takes the powder and then compresses it and while he is compressing if he use too much uh, pressure, then the force uh, the, the pores will be very, very small and then mass transfer will automatically may come into picture. If he does not pressurize much, then particles will fall the strength of the catalyst will not be there. Then when uh, tons and tons of this catalyst is put inside the reactor, particularly packet bed and all that. So, they will be crushed. That is why mechanical strength also is required. At least for that sake, you have to pressurize to certain uh, pressure and then you have to also sinter. And when you are sintering the particles, that is you know to for mechanical strength. For sintering the particles, again the pores may close. Some of the pores may close. So, that is the reason why always there will be some mass transfer effect in the actual particles. right? So, what the catalyst manufacturer tells is that my effectiveness factor for this catalyst is 0.5, okay? but you have for the same reaction the intrinsic rate of reaction. So, then what is the actual rate of reaction now? 0.5. So, that is the actual 0.5 that rate, you know 0.5 into that rate equation, that is what, what you have to use in the design expression. That is also another advantage of or another use of effectiveness factor. Okay? So, this is what, what we do now and the first thing what we do is we take independently the first step that means only film controlling. Okay? If I have film alone controls what will be the effectiveness factors? Then we will go inside you will forget uh, film and then you take only the pores and if there is only mass transfer resistance in the pores then how do you de uh, develop effectiveness factor? Now, there are two steps pore diffusion and also film diffusion. Now, combining what will be the overall effectiveness factor. So, that means, when you have some film control, some diffusion control through the pores, then how do you calculate the overall effectiveness factor for the particle. Okay, this is what, what we do in the next few classes. So, to start with now, we will have the first uh, film control alone. So, we will call this one uh, inter and intra intra phase effectiveness factors effectiveness okay good so what we do is we have the particle we have the film surrounding this, this we have done many times. Like for example, if I have, if I have only porous particle uh, sorry in a non porous particle, okay, there is no diffusion you know the second mass transfer step will not be there and we also have some catalysts uh, you know non porous catalysts. Huh? Which one? Ah, the reaction is occurring only on the outside surface. So, when you have that kind of uh, catalysts, non porous particles, then 
we know this I do not have to ask you many times we have discussed this, this may be uh, C B bulk concentration, then this will be C S that is surface concentration, this is the catalyst, this is filling. So, we can also have here temperature profiles. Okay. How do you draw temperature profile here? Yeah, that is the question you have to ask. Is the reaction exothermic or endothermic? First, I will say exothermic. You have to start only from here first note T B. Yeah. So, it may increase like this. How exactly how the function increases depends on the equation. Okay. Yeah, like this. Only reaction is taking place there. Okay. This is exothermic. If I have endothermic, decreases. Correct, no? On the surface. We should develop an equation for uh, effectiveness factors taking these two into account. First, let us take isothermal particle. Okay. Then, we can go for non-isothermal particle. The analysis you have done already that under steady state conditions, the rate of uh, mass transfer must be equal to rate of reaction at steady state. Okay. at steady state rate of mass transfer i don't write the uh, words but straight away i will write the equation because already we have done so many times yeah this is cb minus cs as usual i will take first order reaction this is kcs this a is centimeter square per centimeter cubed of the particle. That means, surface area per unit volume of the particle. Okay. So, then with this, you know, there will be a lot of confusion. Huh? So, that is why I am just pointing out this, even though it is very simple, but I think you will make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Then now, tell me what will be the units of uh, this k without a with a, uh, uh, yeah, without a and with a. Quickly, time is going. You cannot say, say simply, because you have to write there and tell me. Without a, it is? Per second. Ah, why it is per second? What is this? What are the units of this? Ah, concentration is moles per meter cube. Yeah, but who told you that? Uh, yeah, the, what is the overall uh, dimension here for the rate? Entire thing? This is rate. This is R O B observed. Moles per meter. Yeah, moles per. Yeah, now we understood now what is the problem. It depends on first of all how do you define the rate. And for catalytic reactions, what is the logical way of defining the rule? Huh? Yeah, maybe area. Area is more difficult to use in the sense that you have to measure that weight is the simplest one. So, now if I have rate as moles per uh, second, okay, second per kg catalyst. Now, depending on this you will have the corresponding uh, you know dimensions for k g a and k, please remember that, please remember that, but the moment I also express this k g catalyst. Okay. The, the moment I also express this moles per second per centimeter square. Okay. Imagine that we have moles second centimeter square. What will be the units of this? What will be the units of this? Centimeter square of catalyst surface, I can always know. What uh, Savita, you are not able to follow. Follow the question. See, rate in heterogeneous system can be written in, may, in many forms. One way of uh, writing is moles of A reacted per unit time per unit weight of the catalyst. We can also write moles reacted per unit time per unit area of catalyst. That is why I said that is mole second meter square a centimeter square. Okay. So, now what will be the units of this k g and k a or k g a and k? Meter per second. Meter, per second. Yeah. meter per second and meter per second under those conditions this is not required. Okay. And particularly when you are solving the problems you will make these mistakes and then you think that you correctly did it, but you basically you made a mistake dimensionally also. Okay. So, that is the reason why I am just pointing out this. Okay, anyway, 
So, these are the simple things, but number of times I have to point out, because uh, you know otherwise you may not remember things. Okay. So, solving this C s we know already, this is k g a c b by k g a plus k, this already we have done. I think k 1, uh, this is equation 1, oh, gone outside. Huh? Okay. 1, 2, yeah. So, then R O B is given by K C B by 1 by K by K G A. Okay, this is what you get now, after substitution and then just dividing. Correct, Anila, you got it? Yes. Yeah. So, this is the equation, where this also can be written as K C B by 1 plus D A, where D A equal to dam color number. defined here as k c b to the power of n minus 1 by k g a. Okay. This is another form of damp color number. Okay. What does that tell me? I mean, if I say that I have damp color number equal to 1000, large number. Which one is controlling? Mass first and second. Okay. If dumb caller number is small, 0.01, yeah. reaction yeah. is controlled. Yeah. Okay. So, that is the meaning of that. Right? So, you also had another dumb caller number, k tau c a c a naught to the power c naught to the power of n minus 1. That is another form of dumb caller number. What does that tell you? If I say that I have k tau c a naught to the power of n minus 1 is very large. What is the meaning? That is straight used only for homogeneous reactions. For first order it is k tau. Okay. For second order, it is k tau c n r. What is the meaning of that? If k tau c n r is very large, what is the meaning? Conversion. Conversion is very, very high. And k tau small means conversion is small. Okay. So, that gives an indication, okay. this reactor has very high damp color number, homogeneous system. So, that means, you are, you are getting very large conversions. Okay. Yeah. But the second form of damp color number is for heterogeneous system, that is for homogeneous heterogeneous systems, where this will give us an idea of how the reaction, uh, you know, which one is controlling, whether mass transfer is controlling or reaction is controlling. You know, generally in an academic institution, we never bother about these numbers, but in industry, it is generally a lot of thumb rules there for them. Okay. Biot number so much, biot number also will come sometime later. Okay. That gives an indication, biot, biot number so much means, okay, 1000, okay, you do not have to worry the things are going on very well. Like for example, k tau c a naught is very large for uh, homogeneous reaction means, conversion is very high, we do not have to worry, very nice. So, that kind of uh, things, good. Okay. So, now this is the one dam color number definition and uh, now we will define eta bar is the effectiveness factor, eta bar effectiveness factor as actual rate of reaction, you have the all the names, actual rate of reaction, global rate of reaction absorbed rate of reaction, anything you can write. Actual rate of reaction, short form I will write, divided by rate without mass transfer, without mass transfer limitation. Okay. Of course, we can also write eta bar as actual rate of reaction uh, limitation divided by rate without any limitation means the concentration must be same throughout the particle. 
okay must be same that's what what we expect but in reality that may not happen so that's why uh, this effectiveness factor less than one means if it is isothermal system then we will know how much less okay yeah so this is rate of or uh, rate with or uh, rate or uh, based on rate based on bulk conditions based on bulk conditions because some books write like this some books write like this yeah so that is the one this is equation i'm calling number no equation this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 good so now this i have taken first order reaction okay i can also take second order reaction and then we have to solve correspondingly now for this example what is the effectiveness factor what is the actual rate of reaction or observed correct no actual rate of reaction is r observed so r observed is written as k c b divided by 1 plus d a correct no good so the other one k c s why yes sir k c b because evaluated under bulk conditions at bulk condition so k c b this this we can get cancelled out then we will have 1 plus d a so effectiveness factor for first order reaction is this equation okay so this is equation number 6 that is equation number 6 okay good yeah swami is telling okay yeah so now what normally can happen is that if i know dam colon number this is the dam colon number and for first order this uh, simplifies only k by kga uh, yeah kga then kg is the mass transfer correlation which i can get and k must be yeah uh, the intrinsic rate constant please remember that is intrinsic rate constant this k that means what is the meaning without any mass transfer effect coming into picture like we have imagined our uh, langmuir initial wood kinetics langmuir initial wood kinetics we never thought it is first order reaction by the way what is the order of reaction in those cases in langmuir uh, langmuir initial wood kinetics what will be the order of reaction for lhhw kinetics one why one what is the meaning of one when you say uh, order yeah but then what is the order with respect to you know uh, the equations which you have derived for example first equation a plus b going to r plus s you have developed a uh, big equation no the order of the rate determining sir huh the order of the rate determining sir is that driving force yeah the order of rate determining step only surface reaction we have taken first case you see what is the equation you got you have the notes no this is very important huh? i think i have to connect you every time i have to connect you every time you know because order of reaction there is very interesting point here that's why i am trying to tell you yeah what is the equation uh, anurag final rate only no yeah that's what what we are asking that is intermediate rate where i don't know anything yeah bola you have yeah rate equal to c a c b minus yeah but then all that then what is the order of reaction 2 2 you said 1 uh, now it gone to 2 uh, after i ask another 5 minutes it will go to 3 okay yeah why why it is 2 why it is 1 it's all are elements here no it is not 2 because it's not 2 so it should be 1 no sir it's not fraction it's not an integer yeah so what it should be you cannot say any order for that kind of equations it is purely for the power law model where rate is defined as minus r equal to k into ca to the power of something cb to the power of something okay of course even if you have reversible reaction also we can say but for heterogeneous systems you cannot unless you take out all the terms 
neglect one term you know in the denominator except one all other terms are neglected okay i am just think just uh, trying to tell that so then you will have only one at the bottom right uh, then you remove also the um, the backward reaction then what is the order you can say it is the second order because ca to the power of 1 cb to the power of 1 so that is why you cannot say for uh, any rate equation what is the order of reaction unless you have power law model so highly restricted this is one of the basic things even when i sit in a phd interviews when i ask uh, ask also why am phd interviews means two degrees already they got okay that's why i am telling so after getting two degrees also this clarity is not there for many people in the mind that's why i try to tell all these simple things complicated things anyway you can you can learn later if you know simple things so that's why order of reaction means immediate you know uh, what we say is first order or second order okay you cannot say anything for uh, heterogeneous uh, particularly nhhw kinetics what is the order of reaction right and i told you also there are some negative orders it is very funny negative orders are really very good if everything is negative orders it will be very good why as the concentration is decreasing rate of reaction will be increase that is excellent no so you maintain zero concentration you will get infinite rate theoretically so infinite rate means you don't need any react at all rate infinity means if before you start the reaction convert it <laughs> so it is so nice but you know in nature um, uh, i think we don't have any negative order reactions except in langmuir insulin kinetics when you take i think you are going to solve those problems in the assignment so when you are uh, solving those problems so sometimes you get in the denominator some terms very important dominating terms sometimes can be neglected so under certain some uh, conditions you will have at the in the denominator you will have some terms and in the in the uh, numerator you will have less number of terms for example cacb or or simply only cacb here in the bottom you will have maybe c a square and cb some conditions it depends on you know how the actual reaction is taking place we have taken very simple cases like one active site uh, and uh, one molecule adsorbing but if you take the uh, hydrogen example you you see this books you know uh, as i mentioned uh, kinetics uh, uh, smith book i don't know fagler has given this sometimes you will get square root also in the bracket, in the denominator you would have seen in the table which i have given sometimes you will get square so that dep- uh, how that depends is how that depends on how the molecules are getting adsorbed on the active site and then getting dissociated or getting associated all these kinds of situations will come into picture under those conditions you may get sometimes negative orders and one reaction what i can mention carbury uh, given that one is uh, i think co going to co2 uh, on platinum catalyst under certain uh, conditions you will get some negative orders okay it is given in uh, carbury book also okay that is only one example which i can give but that is not straight getting but after finding out the kinetics finally you will end up some terms and that will result into negative order that means it will be again it will become a power law model type where minus ra equal to k by ca or ca square or ca to the power of n in general okay so that is what that, that is the kind of thing okay good so i think we have to stop here uh, okay we will stop here and then uh, i will uh, give you the assignment for you to you, you are not submitting anyway for second order reaction and half order reaction in the same case here start second order here that means square and then you solve same procedure and half order you solve for cs and again same procedure so this will be the exercises you have to do in your room okay good i think tomorrow we will meet anyway